Well, welcome back. We are moving from how we get the information out of nucleic acids from DNA through RNA to proteins into gene expression. And that is certainly related to the reading of the messenger RNA to get the proteins. But there are ways of regulating how that happens. And so that is what is meant by gene expression. We saw that with eukaryotes, the DNA contains both coding and non-coding regions. And so that RNA gets processed before it gets read by the ribosomes to make the proteins. That's one way of regulating gene expression. Which exons get stitched together or spliced together to create the final messenger RNA to be read. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at other things and other mechanisms for gene expression in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. And this lecture will be going just through epigenetics. Epigenetics is the study of ways that without changing the DNA sequence, we can change the genes or change how that information is expressed in the phenotype. So gene regulation often involves these two or three terms, acetylation and deacetylation, as well as methylation and demethylation. So acetylation and deacetylation is the addition or the removal of an acetyl group. And if the DNA is acetylated or has undergone acetylation, that relaxes it, unfolds it a little bit, and that makes it more accessible for transcription. That means that the promoter region, that conserved DNA sequence, will be available, will not be twisted up inside of the DNA. It'll be available and relaxed so that RNA polymerase can bind to that promoter region and then read that RNA to make, or read the DNA to make the RNA, and then that RNA will be read to make proteins. Deacetylation, or the removal of that acetyl group, causes the chromatin to tighten and then the RNA polymerase is not going to be able to find that promoter region to bind and read the DNA to make RNA. The acetyl group I've shown down here, there's a carbon double bound to an oxygen, so that is a carbonyl group. It's in the middle of the molecule, so that would make it a ketone. And there is a CH3. This squiggle is representing the rest of the molecule. Methylation, we're going to add a methyl group. And in this case, it is always added to the base cytosine. Methylation is also called DNA silencing. It's more permanent in that once something is methylated, it is not commonly demethylated. Development means when we're that first cell, our zygote, we undergo mitosis and we create genetically identical cells in our bodies or in any organism that undergoes mitosis to be multicellular, but not all genes are on in all the cells. Our skin cells have genes turned on that allow our skin cells to behave and act like skin cells. Our liver cells turn off all the genes that a skin cell would need, but they're turning on the genes that a liver cell would need. And that's true in all of the differentiated tissues in our bodies. The DNA, the sequence of the DNA does not differ between any of the cells in a multicellular organism, but we can turn on and turn off those regions by acetylation and deacetylation, and we can also have the more permanent methylation. There is the methyl group, it's a CH3 with the rest of the molecule here. So an acetyl group does contain a methyl group, 
but it also has to have this carbonyl carbon, so this entire thing is an acetyl group. A methyl group is just the CH3 attached to the carbon skeleton. I've included many resources from the Camp Khan Academy page for our course talking about DNA and chromatin regulation. Chromatin is our chromosomes within our cells. Ways that we can regulate transcription, whether we do or don't transcribe a section of DNA would be a way of controlling whether that DNA gets expressed through RNA to protein. Cellular differentiation depends on the expression control of the genes in our nucleus. We will also later in the chapter see gene regulation in prokaryotes because they do not have those coding and non-coding regions and those prokaryotic gene regulation is organized in structures called operons and we will uh, have a final article of gene regulation in eukaryotes. So I won't click on all of these in this lecture, but they are in this uh, slideshow, and I will also pull them out of the slideshow and keep them as separate entities within the module, so you don't have to scroll back through an entire slideshow to find the Khan Academy uh, resources that are relevant to Chapter 16. So here's looking at our eyeball and our liver and our digestive system. So somatic cells are all the cells in an organism that are not the reproductive cells. So the DNA is identical in all of our somatic cells, but not all the genes are expressed in every cell. So it does control which genes determine my eyeball cells do eyeball function and my liver cells do liver function. We saw before with our transcription and translation that in a prokaryote, there's just one compartment. And so the replication happens in the cytoplasm, transcription happens in the cytoplasm, translation happens in the cytoplasm. And in fact, as soon as any messenger RNA is transcribed, the ribosomes can begin to translate it because everything is in that one single compartment. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, have a nucleus. So this is the nuclear membrane. The cytoplasm is out here. The cell membrane would be around all of that. DNA replication has to happen in the nucleus because that is where the DNA is. Transcription has to happen in the nucleus because the DNA is there RNA polymerases in the nucleus to read the nucleotides of DNA to make that pre-mRNA that contains both the introns that will stay in the nucleus and the exons that are spliced together to exit the nucleus. We get our mature RNA, so trans, uh, replication and transcription happen in the nucleus in eukaryotes, and the Exons that have been spliced together exit the nucleus to get into the cytoplasm. That is where the ribosomes are, and we can finally do translation. We know that the rough endoplasmic reticulum is also attached to the nuclear membrane, and it is rough because it has ribosomes. So that is the other place that translation can take uh, place, but that messenger RNA still has to exit the nucleus. Looking at prokaryotes, remember that prokaryotes only have coding DNA. They can control their gene expression by organizing genes that have related function right up next to each other and put all of that under control of a single promoter. In eukaryotes, we don't organize our DNA this way. We have one gene with one promoter and a second gene with a second promoter. Each gene has its own promoter. 
And that has to do with that processing and putting the exons together so that we are assured that only one gene is contained in that messenger RNA that exits the nucleus and gets read by the ribosomes. Prokaryotes have such small genomes and it is easier to have just one promoter to be able to transcribe all of the genes that have a related function. It's more efficient. This is showing what is called the tryptophan operon. Tryptophan is an amino acid. And operon is that series of genes with related function. They're all next to each other on the chromosome of the prokaryote. And they are preceded by an operator and a promoter. We've already seen the promoter. We know that that is a DNA sequence that the RNA polymerase recognizes, binds to, can open up the DNA and do transcription. The operator is also a sequence of DNA because this whole thing represents a sequence of DNA. The operator is like a switch. It determines, will this operon be on, meaning it will be transcribed, or will it be off, and we will not get transcription. In the case of tryptophan, these genes are necessary for the biosynthesis of tryptophan. That means that the microbe can take various components, various molecule, molecules and atoms, and build them into the amino acid tryptophan. What's shown on top is that this organism is in an environment where tryptophan is already present. If tryptophan is free, available in the environment, there is no reason for the microbe to spend all of the energy to build tryptophan. Tryptophan binds to a chemical called the repressor, and that is a protein. Its job is to repress or prevent transcription. Tryptophan binds the repressor. The repressor binds that switch, the operator. And now we have these proteins glopped onto the DNA. RNA polymerase still binds to the promoter, but it can't continue because it runs into this stuff, these two proteins, this protein and this amino acid sitting on top of the DNA. And now we cannot proceed. So we don't spend enormous amounts of energy building an RNA molecule and additional enormous amounts of energy uh, building up the components to make an amino acid. It's free, it's already present. However, if the microbe finds itself in an environment where there is no tryptophan, it will proceed to make its own tryptophan. It needs tryptophan to build its proteins. So if there's none of that amino acid in the environment, that repressor protein cannot bind to the operator. RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, and now there's nothing blocking it from proceeding all the way along that operon and transcribing each of these genes that will be translated into the enzymes necessary to build tryptophan. So This is an anabolic operon. It is designed to build up molecules. So if that molecule is already present, we will not spend the energy to make that molecule. The second operon that every cell biology class studies is the LEC operon. These genes are for the metabolism, the catabolism of lactose. So the tryptophan operon was anabolic for building tryptophan. The lactose operon is catabolic for breaking down 
lactose. The organization is the same. The genes responsible for this metabolic pathway are all right next to each other. Upstream, ahead of those genes, is the operator, the switch, and up, upstream of the operator is the promoter. We also have a couple of environmental conditions. It says, in the absence of CAMP, which is cyclic AMP, the CAP protein does not bind to the promoter, and we get a low rate of transcription, so there's nothing blocking the operator. But if cyclic AMP is present, then we do get the CAP protein binding the promoter. That enhances the ability of RNA polymerase to bind, and we get a lot of transcription. <clears throat> the CAP protein, the CAP protein stands for catabolite uh, activation protein. CAMP is that cyclic AMP. The CAP levels depend also on the levels of glucose, as does cyclic AMP. When glucose levels are low, the levels of cyclic AMP go up. The reason for that is when glucose is high, we are doing a lot of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration produces a lot of ATP. As we run low on glucose, we are getting less ATP. The ATP is going off to do the anabolic reactions and it gets hydrolyzed to ADP. And if we aren't getting more ATP, it gets hydrolyzed again to AMP and undergoes that cyclic reaction. So low glucose increases the amount of the cyclic AMP, and that is the signal for the CAP protein, the catabolite activation protein, to bind. And now we are going to transcribe these genes to catabolize the lactose. And we need all three of those to be able to do that. The transcription is only going to happen when glucose is limited, not necessarily eliminated, but at very low levels, and lactose is present. The reason for that is that glucose, as we saw in our aerobic respiration lectures, that is pretty much the easiest to metabolize monosaccharide. All living things that can do aerobic respiration can use glucose, and it is the one that we have the best enzymes for. However, in the absence of enough glucose, we'll seek out alternative fuels. And in prokaryotes, the next preferred one is lactose. Lactose is a disaccharide that's made out of glucose and galactose. The galactose can undergo a few uh, reactions to be rearranged to glucose because glucose and galactose are isomers. They're structural isomers of each other. If no lactose is present, then there is no reason to transcribe genes that will catabolize lactose. There is no substrate. So in the absence of lactose, there is a repressor binding the operator. The polymerase will still bind the promoter, but it can't move forward. If we have lactose present, lactose will bind to the repressor and remove it from the DNA. And now RNA polymerase will be able to transcribe all of those genes to be able to create the enzymes to catabolize lactose. That cyclic AMP cap, cap complex stimulates that RNA polymerase to also create those, but if we um, have no lactose present, the repressor is going to bind. And even if we lack glucose so that the cyclic AMP rises, the cap protein binds, 
no lactose, we still will not transcribe these genes. We don't have glucose to eat, but if we don't have lactose to eat, no transcription of these genes. The only conditions under which transcription will proceed is if glucose is very low and lactose is present. The next part of the regulation is going to be talking about how we organize the DNA. In eukaryotes, the DNA is wrapped around histone proteins, and that creates a nucleosome. The red is the DNA, the green is the histone, and a histone protein complex is eight different little histones that come together for the DNA to wrap around. On the right side, we see an actual electron micrograph where these nucleosomes look like little beads on a string. The string is the short stretch of DNA that is not wrapped around histone proteins. And where we'll leave off here is looking at an image of methylation and the acetylation. The so methylation is uh, helping with these histone complexes, and in highly methylated regions, the transcription factors can't bind the DNA. So highly methylated regions are going to be uh, not expressed, and that will differ in different cell types because we want to turn off eyeball genes in our liver, we want to turn off liver genes in our eyeballs. However, if we acetylate the histones, then we relax the DNA, and this piece that was wrapped up tight with methylation and not available in a different cell type, we will acetylate around the histones relax the DNA, and now this region is available to be transcribed and translated. That is one way that we can use the exact same DNA sequence in every single cell, but control which regions are relaxed and available and which regions are folded up and unavailable.